Dubai, the city that we're broadcasting from right now, has suffered a, a harsh bit of fallout as a result of the real estate slump. But that's not keeping some of this region's biggest builders from continuing to build. You see the Burj Al Arab behind me, very famous hotel. Well, the man who constructed that, Mohammed Al Abar, is still at work. He built the biggest mall here. And now he's up to building the world's tallest skyscraper. I spoke with him and asked him, who's buying? The real estate sale is there, but it's soft. But on the shopping side, the retail is up, I think, about 25% uh, the past six months. Uh, and we have people coming in uh, almost from 200 countries around this. It's amazing because the number of people who live in the city are about 205 nationalities. So we have, uh, you know, if you fly two hours from Dubai, mm -hmm. you, you reach close to about 700 million people. Here in Dubai, there's plenty of conversations to be had about the level of debt that, that the Emirate has taken on here. What kind of, of sales do you see there? What, what people don't, don't really look at is the detail. The government of Dubai total debt is not even 10 billion U.S. Direct debt to the government. And again, these debts have gone to uh, the power section of, of the business, and that's a great profit generator, by the way. But the other debt are company debts that are, these are investment companies belonging to the government uh, indirectly, that they have invested the money in cash, uh, generating uh, businesses. Uh, again, maybe value of some businesses have gone down a little bit and have moved up accordingly. So I think people should really be fair when they say government debt, what is it? Uh, again, the government have paid uh, over $10 billion uh, the past uh, nine months uh, from that uh, debt. Some debt's going to be paid again, $10 billion, I think, by the end of the year, while the rest they'll be rolling, and then during 0, uh, 010, some of that will be paid as well. What kind of appetite do you expect there to be for this bond issue from people like that? Well, I believe that the appetite is going to be reasonably good. Um, most probably a lot of it will be taken by regional institutions, in my, in my opinion. Uh, but if uh, there'll be some uh, government entities also coming in and taking uh, taking this bond as well. Where do you think we are in terms of the global recovery in real estate? Well, I think we are in a global possibly stability. I am not sure about global recovery in the real estate sector because still supply situation is is there. I think banking challenges to basically support any real estate activities is at, at a great doubt. So I think we are still, we're, we're in stability, but it's still challenging times ahead of us, in my opinion. Here in Dubai, real estate in particular is of concern that, that prices are still under pressure. That forecast from UBS just this past week saying 25% of homes are going to be vacant in the next year. What's the reality? I agree that 2008, prices went up almost by 50 percent in one year but they also crashed by almost 48 percent same year supply have stopped completely um, I would like to say that also people are still moving into the city in great numbers so we have a, about 400,000 people have moved in the city in the past 12 months but I but I would like to say that I don't really see prices coming down in my opinion any further than than what we've seen but I see stability in prices and possibly we'll need during the coming period of time I think we might see a few percentage point improvement in prices as Mohammed Al Abar, the chairman of Imar Properties, we should note uh, that Mr. Al Abar was one of the individuals who was uh, removed from the investment council here by Sheikh Mohammed over the weekend. When asked by Bloomberg uh, just what that meant, he shrugged it off, said, companies restructure.